Thought I'd give you a shot of the of the creek here in Ozark. They call it, I guess they call it Finley River. I keep saying creek. It ain't a creek. They keep saying, buddy, it's a river in, in Missouri. Well, in Mississippi, this is a creek. Even though it's flooded, it's still a creek. Yeah, that water's rolling. Well, we did get some rain. Let me adjust this, excuse me, for zooming in on my face without letting you know what I was doing. But uh, I'm kind of walking fast because it's cold. But uh, yeah, we did get some rain, but we didn't get no snow, hardly no ice. Just east of us in Seymour, got an ice storm. Limbs were breaking, breaking, you know, light lines, transfer. Farmers were blowing. It was a mess. Well, so they put some snow back in the forecast for next Friday. And that ain't going to happen either. KY3, weather people, meteor, I think he calls himself a meteorologist. <laughs> Well, join in with uh, the call to Buddy and believe that we can move the weather. Hell, if we all put our mind to it, it'd turn to spring. Be early, but it'd be... <laughs> we, could, we could do it. No, all joking aside, uh, the person that showed me that he could control weather was Tupelo Joe. Tupelo Joe... When I met him, got with him, he was 91 years old. And he and another evangelist named Emily Limley wanted to get back on the road. They had been off the road for almost eight years, five to eight years. And some of the churches, they hadn't been in in 10 years. So this was day two after my awakening, August the 17th, 2003. I met Emily and she told me about Joe and she said I you're gonna love him <laughs> he's full of the I am he's full of Christ country con consciousness Christ energy and sure enough when he pulled up after driving about 1400 miles non-stop <laughs> well he did stop <laughs> let, me, let me put it that way he had to take a leak every now and then but when he got out of that car I didn't know what was going on. One arm was drawn up like this, and this left, I mean, this right arm and this right leg drawn up. It was just drawn up, really. Can't get it in the camera like that. And uh, kept, he kept it kind of high up on his chest. And it must have took him 15 minutes to get out of that car. And he did. He got out of that car, walked up in that house, and we had a sit down uh, round table meeting and he had all the energy in the world coming from that long ride he he'd come 14 1400 miles or something it was it was unreal and yeah in getting to know him he right off the bat he turned to in the Bible where it said and you tell them I am sent you I guess that's Exodus where Moses is talking and he the first Bible Bible verse within the first hour he we talking and stuff he looked up at me he said what does that mean to you and I said I, it means I am the I am in this time continuum of reality that I have awakened to my con Christ conscious consciousness nature and I am that that I say I am and he said you got that overnight I said yes sir I was downloaded they told me a whole lot more than just that but that's about all I can remember right now you see only about a week it went by seven to eight days before I actually met Joe okay Joe commences to telling me 
that the prophecy had said that people would wake up really fast and he would be able to see it before he made his transition. And he said, I was one of the ones that he was shown in his dreams and visions that would come forth to this, this world awakening with Christ's conscious knowledge. And so he was happy to meet me. And then they got all excited over the next week or so, talking and planning about going back on the road. And I got excited too. I said, well, this would be a place I could tell my story. And, uh, well, that's a long story within itself. I, I, I really kept my mouth shut for a very, very long time. Because you see, over the next six months, I had these outer body experiences where I was taken to, just like we sit at a round table with Joe and Emily and me, to a place where it was off of this world where we had a round table and there were beings that I couldn't see their faces, but I could kind of hear their voices and, and I knew they were telling me the secret. Well, they would tell me they're telling me the secrets of the universe. But the, uh, the joke was the one that I thought was Joe Turner, even though I couldn't see him, I could just, you know, tell by kind of his voice. He always laughed and said, yeah, but when we put him back in his body, he ain't going to remember nothing. <laughs> He's got to walk into it. Sure enough, that was the case. All right, I told you all that to give you a little insight into Joe. Well, when we did go on to the Evangelist Trail, I seen Joe heal people. I'm talking about people with paperwork that said they were deaf, brought it, brought it to the church, and he'd touch them on the ear. Whew. And next thing you know, they were here. We've seen all kinds of miracles. I don't want to go off into it now because really I don't think you'd believe me if I was to tell you everything I've seen in that first year. I actually drove for two years. I ain't never even sat down to write out all the cities or tell you what happened in each one, what church we was in or whatever. Maybe that's best not even told or known. So you may never hear it from me. <laughs> Okay, now, during this time, I was doing the driving. And I'd look at the forecast and we'd be setting out for Atlanta. And I'd tell Emily and Joe, I said, there's rain. We're gonna have too much rain. It's gonna slow us down. Joe said, tell me where it's coming from. Tell me what they're expecting. And so I did, whether I was at a computer or looking at it on a television where I could see what they were talking about I'd relay the information back to Joe and Joe would go into a state of consciousness look at me and he said we can move that buddy do you believe me I said yeah I believe you and uh, time after time after time for two years anywhere we was ready to get up and go from was perfect weather now we might be there an hour and it start raining but anytime I was driving, the weather was perfect. Perfect driving weather for two and a half years. And people wonder why I say I can move weather. I can move weather because I've seen Joe Turner move it. If you see somebody walk on water, get ready because you can do it. But Joe was that kind of being. He was that powerful. Okay. That, does that mean I can heal folks? Yes, I can run away from anybody that ever says that they can heal you. Because that's what Joe taught me. He said it ain't the person that's healing them. I said, Joe, but it's you touching them and it's you praying and it's you willing it to be. He said, buddy, it's deeper. He said, they are me and I am them. And when I command myself to know the knowledge of what I am and that they are that, then I touch the part of I am in them and they become aware at some level, cellular, DNA, 
that they need to heal and they forgive. He says it's a process. It all starts with forgiving. So I said, Joe, you mean you don't heal them, you facilitate it? He said, yes. Well, that's what I do. I facilitate it. If a person is in line, wants to understand what's holding them back, sickness in their body, I can actually talk to them for a little bit, and the next thing you know, they feel them better. I don't care what's wrong with them. It can all be reversed. Our bodies, our DNA is that powerful. That's what the ultra elites, that's what the rulers of this world don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that you don't have to take medicines, that you don't have to be sick, that the older people have to stay sedentary. They're trained not to move. They're trained to stay down. The less they move, the sicker they get. In their mind, they get believing that they got dementia and Alzheimer's and all this other mess. It's not true. It's not true. Everybody can heal their brain. The brain is one of the, liver is the easiest, the brain is the next. And it's a thinking thing. We can all do it. It's Sunday right now. I come by this big First Baptist Church and they got a police car sitting in front of it because I guess they're afraid somebody's going to go in there and shoot them. It's like that all across the country now. It just feeds ignorance. If the I Am was in that building, there's no way no shooter would ever go in it because there's something about I Am consciousness that whatever that shooter had intention, it's like energy. He would feel it. Especially if you had a whole church believing it. Oh, I don't know. I've said too much already. All right, I gotta go. I don't even know where I'm, where I stopped rambling and started ranting. All right. Somebody said in the comment, they like my old man rant. Keep doing them. I don't mean to do it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, later.